Well, we're ending our series uh, today on modern love. I'm going to move this out of the way because you know I'll trip over. <laughs> we're ending our series on modern love. And we started the series with a survey. Right? Many of you took a survey about love and what it means to each one of you. And I'm going to end today with another question for you. Put your thinking caps on. I'm going to ask you, do you know who the most popular poet the most popular and the best-selling poet in America today is. Who is the most popular, best-selling poet in this country? Any ideas? Well, according to the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the BBC, it is this guy. What? You recognize him? Jaal al-Din Muhammad Rumi, known to many people as just he is a 12th century Persian poet. He wrote in what is today Afghanistan and in Turkey. But his poetry has become quite the rage. I mean, a lot of people, including our celebrities, you know how we love a celebrity connection, right? We just love to know what the celebrities are reading. And you'll be happy to know that when Chris Martin from the band Coldplay and yes, I had to read that. I didn't have any idea who Chris Martin was. When Chris Martin from the band Coldplay was going through his divorce from Gwyneth Paltrow, we we're all following that, someone gave him a book of Rumi's poetry, and it changed his life. And I know we're all Beyonce fans, right? I mean, I like a good Beyonce tune as much as the next person. If you were wondering why Beyonce named her daughter Rumi, well, there you go. She is a big Rumi fan. But it's not just with celebrities. His work is now spreading far and wide. It's make, making a resurgence. It's simple. In many ways, it's simple, but it is powerful. I sort of went back through and rediscovered his work this week because he writes a lot about love. And it's powerful stuff. Listen to this. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Let that sink in for a minute, people. Out beyond the ideas or the rules of what is right or what is wrong or what political side you're on or what's happening in our, on here in our country, out beyond the right and the wrong and the rules, there is a field. I'll meet you there. The Apostle Paul would call that field love, agape love. The great love that is larger than ourselves, it's not something we do. It is something that we learn to live inside of, agape love. In our series of Modern Love, we've been talking about how the Greeks of Jesus' day divided the word love up into several different words. We know eros is romantic love. I think it's interesting to note, just interesting, that the word eros is never used in the Bible. Not once. The word eros for romantic love is not used anywhere in the New Testament. Perhaps Jesus and the writers of the gospel want us to understand, I mean, we're all drawn to romance, but they want us to understand the importance of the other forms of love. Philia, brotherly love, friendship. That's what George talked about here last week. But by far, the word used most often in the gospel and in the writings of Paul is agape love. The highest form of love. Selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love. It's that field that I believe Rumi is talking about. That place that is bigger and more expansive than any rules about what is right or what is wrong or what we think is right or wrong. Listen to those verses again from 1 Corinthians. If I have all the faith so I can move mountains but I do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away my possessions and I hand over my body so that I may boast but I do not have love, I have nothing. Now, faith that moves mountains, boy, that's pretty impressive, right? And giving away all your possessions, I mean, these are good things. But what Paul is saying is, if you do those and you don't do them in love, living inside love, 
Well, they just don't mean anything. Because inside love is patience and kindness. Inside this field of love, no one is arrogant or rude or resentful. Inside the space of love, we rejoice in truth. Now, I know we love to read those verses um, at weddings, and that's okay. They're beautiful verses. But don't stop at the romance there, because the word used here is agape. The word that Paul uses is agape love, that bigger kind of love that, that pushes us to be better and more of who we are, of who God intended us to be. Agape love is not a thing we do. It is a place where we learn to exist. For the Apostle Paul, that kind of love is a state of being. Love is. Love does or does not. It never comes to an end. It is this field where we exist called love. And every once in a while, we find ourselves there. Sometimes when we least expect it, we, we just look up and wow, we're, we're in a space that we can't explain, but we know and feel the love all around us. One of my favorite parts of the movie Ghostbusters is this scene. This is Winston from Ghostbusters after he's just defeated the Marshmallow Man. And he comes down and he says, I love this town. I have to tell you, there are moments in this church, I'm sorry I can't help myself, where I just want to go, I love this church. Two Friday nights ago, we were at the tap house for, for Valentine's Night. A lot, a lot of people who were looking for a way to celebrate Valentine's that wouldn't be painful. And, and we got together and we had some music and some food. Two nights ago here at the fish fry, Leonard on the piano in the parlor, our children serving the tables, bringing the condiments in, people laughing and talking and having community. Gosh, you just want to come back and say, I love this community. That's love. That's that bigger love, right? And then we hear Jesus whisper, Hold on just a cotton-picking minute. Yes, I'm sorry, you can laugh. That would be the Southern translation of Matthew 5, 44. Because Jesus says, I know people say, love your neighbor, hate your enemy, but hold on a cotton-picking minute. Because I say, love your enemy. I say, pray for those who despise you. Say what, Jesus? What are you talking about? Say what? Love your enemies. Pray for those who despise you. Anybody can love those who love you. I mean, it's great and it's fun and, and we love it. And, but before we start patting ourselves on the back, Jesus says, hold on. Anybody can do that. I am challenging you to love your enemies, to love those who annoy you and despise you. Those people, try loving those people. Jesus loves to stir the pot, doesn't he? He loves to stretch us beyond the limitations of our time and our culture, even our own minds, to do things we never thought possible. Agape love, this love of, that allows us to love our enemies, it's big and expansive. It draws us to act outside of ourselves, beyond what we think is possible. To see every human being on this earth as God sees them to see the God in every human being on this earth, even those who would hurt us. Now, God is not saying that you have to continue to be hurt or mistreated. That, that's not the point here. But he is saying that we have to look at even those people and understand that God lives inside of them. They just may not know it. In our Tuesday Grow Group, we were studying a book called The Good and Beautiful Life. And in that, it introduced sort of a slightly different definition of agape love that I think is really good here. It said agape love is to will the good of another. To want what's good for everyone on this earth. To will the good of another. Not an emotion, but to will the good for them. You can do that from a distance. You can do that from anywhere. These may be people who annoy you, the people who 
might hurt you. You learn to see the God in them and will good for them. And to wish them the life that God intended for them. For every person here. God doesn't say, okay, these people over here, because they've done this, they're over here. God loves them. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The kingdom of God doesn't advance until we all advance. And that includes even those people who offend us and those people who we might consider enemies. All of those people. And let me tell you, in the space of agape love, there is no room for revenge. There is no room for spite. There is no room for getting even. Because in agape love, well, 1 John 4, 7 tells us love is from God and everyone who loves God knows God. And the person who doesn't love doesn't know God. Because God is love. God is the field. God is this expansive, unconditional, selfless love. That's what God is. And to know God is to live inside that love with every with everything it challenges us to do and to be. To live that kind of love in this world, even when it means loving our enemy. It's not easy. It goes against everything we have swirling around in our brain. It goes against everything our culture would tell us. And Jesus says once again, you've got to think about it differently. If you want to be part of the kingdom, remember that's what we talked about. Repent means change your mind. Think about it in a different way. Think about it differently because that's what the kingdom is all about. And in the kingdom, it is possible. It's not easy, but it is possible. Let me show you what it looks like. Let me show you what that kind of love your enemy, agape love looks like in this world. It's an old story, but it's a great one. It's the story of Charlie Brown, not the cartoon character, but the World War II pilot. But really, it's a story of Franz Stigler, a Nazi pilot, who on December 20th of 1943 was given the assignment of finding and shooting down the American B-17 that had been dropping bombs all over Germany. His assignment, seek it and destroy it. Shouldn't be that hard. He found the B-17 right away. Stigler was one bomber kill away from earning the highest Nazi honor they gave, the Knight's Cross. But as he got close to the American plane, something tugged at his heart. That plane was riddled with bullets and he knew for every bullet there was a man inside who was wounded. The plane was flying erratically. He knew they had lost their navigation. One engine was obviously down. Stigler, the Nazi pilot, flew his plane next to the B-17, and he locked eyes with the pilot, one Charlie Brown from Western West Virginia. Charlie Brown closed his eyes. He thought it was the end. But when he opened his eyes, he saw the unthinkable. He saw this German Nazi pilot gesturing to him to follow him. Not knowing what else to do, he did. And sure enough, this pilot, this German pilot, was guiding him, escorting him back to England. And of course, he couldn't go all the way back to England before they got there. The, the Nazi pilot knew he had to turn and fly back, but not before the two planes came side by side again and the two men saluted each other. Amazing. Two men in the field. The field of agape love. Outside of the limits of right or wrong or Nazis or allies, two human beings who are in the field of love, agape love, which calls us to do extraordinary things. Two men in the field of humanity, of love beyond expectations, love beyond understanding who would have thought it, right? These two, men would, these two men would never talk about this. They couldn't. Charlie Brown's plane landed, and the British intelligence said, you got to keep that to yourself, bud. 
It's an enemy. We don't want anybody thinking they're doing good things. And, and of course, if you think Stigler could tell the Nazis that he escorted a plane back to England, he, he would have been shot on sight. <coughs> These two men lived with this secret for 50 years. Finally, 50 years later, Charlie Brown said, I'm going to find this man who saved my life and my crew. And he tracked him down. He was living in Canada at the time. And 50 years later, these two men got together and they became best friends. They were best friends for the next 20 years until they both passed away. Agape love. It does amazing things in this world. The kind, expansive, unconditional love that is God. Make no mistake about it. This is God. A place that allows us to be fully human and yet fully aware of the God and the Christ in each and every one of us. Beyond the pettiness of who is right and who is wrong, there is a field. It's agape love. Will you meet me there? Because there in this place, well, it's love. And all you need is love. <laughs>